welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to look at Ubuntu Studio, which is a Linux distribution which comes pre-installed with a whole host of audio, graphics, video, photography and publishing applications. So if you're a creative individual and you want to get into Linux, Ubuntu Studio can be a great place to start. Right, here we are on the Ubuntu Studio website where we can download the software. So if we go to download, we'll see in the download section there's two possible versions we can download. We can download the LTS version, the long-term support release, or we can download the version based on the latest version of Ubuntu, the Bionic Beaver version of Ubuntu, and I'm going to select that for this test. So you'll see if I click on that, I've actually already downloaded this. It's a 2.8 gigabyte download, so I've already done this already yesterday, so it's all prepared, so I'm going to cancel on that. And uh, you'll see if I go to my Windows desktop, there it is sitting there as a file, all waiting to be used. Now, this file needs to be written to either a DVD or a USB drive, and to do that, I'm going to use a piece of software called Etcher. I really like Etcher, you can get it for free from uh, etcher.io. It's a great bit of software for writing images to drives, not least because it deals with things like decompressing compressed files. So we'll run up Etcher, and uh, there it is. We'll select our image, which will be a Ubuntu Studio, and uh, We'll put it onto the USB drive already put into this machine, which is a Corsair drive. This is a 32 gigabyte USB C drive. Eight gigabytes plus will be, will be fine. And uh, then we can click on Flash. And that'll start off. Windows will check, do we really want to do it? Yes, we do. And that'll uh, hopefully start to work through. And uh, while this is getting on with that, I'll let you know that the minimum RAM required to install Ubuntu Studio is one gigabyte, although really you need at least four gigabytes to run some of the software we'll be looking at here, particularly the video editing software. Anyway, we'll fast forward through the rest of the Etcher imaging and it'll finish off a bit like that. So it's now time for us to try out Ubuntu Studio. Right. I'm now uh, rebooting my PC and it's set to boot from a USB drive. So it should boot as it has, look, here we are from the uh, USB drive we just created with Ubuntu Studio on it. So I'll just select uh, English and you'll see we've got various options. The first one of which is to try Ubuntu Studio without installing, which it actually has just gone through as I was reading that as the default. So this is trying Ubuntu Studio running from a USB drive. And uh, here we are arriving in the system, Ubuntu Studio, Linux for creative humans. I quite like that. And uh, we're almost there. And uh, here we are arrived on the Ubuntu Studio desktop. And it's all there and, and working. That was nice and fast, wasn't it? It was a very quick boot from our USB drive. And we've got all this exciting software waiting for us on the system. All this pre-installed uh, exciting stuff. But I'm not going to just run the system off a USB drive here. No, I'm going to do a full bare metal install. So I now click on install Ubuntu here. And this is what you would do if you want to migrate a machine from say Windows to Linux, or you want to install Linux on a new computer. Do not do this if you do not want to delete Windows or your other operating system you currently have from your computer. Anyway, we can now select uh, English. We will download updates uh, while installing. That seems a good idea. Uh, you can see all the different packages on here. You can see everything. It's part of Ubuntu Studio, all the different software, which is a, a lot of different software that comes uh, pre-packaged with this. It's re really cool, but we'll leave all of that there for now. And uh, yes, erase disk and install Ubuntu Studio, just to say again, do not do this unless you're sure you want to get rid of your current operating system, but I will have installed now. And uh, we'll continue. Time zone London is fine. And I'll set up a simple password and hopefully this should all be set up. And there we are, it's finished. So if we just now reboot this machine, we can take a closer look at Ubuntu Studio. Now, here we are back on the Ubuntu Studio desktop. I've made a few changes so you can see things easier on the screen and in the menus. And I thought we'd start at having a look at some of the audio tools available. And the first thing to say about audio and the Ubuntu Studio is there is so much available. So many utilities, effects modules, uh, instruments, 
If you want to record audio or edit audio, whether it's from a microphone, whether it's using a MIDI instruments and MIDI utilities, there's all sorts of stuff here. I don't do that much work in terms of audio on a computer, but I very much appreciate the, the quantity and quality of the audio tools, the audio programs they've included in this install. And just to go through a few of them, uh, we've got Audacity, as you might expect. This is our uh, pretty much standard open source uh, audio recorder and editing package, fantastic package Audacity. We'll just maybe play a little bit of audio here. Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. Yes, we can play back me. We've also got, uh, no, we don't want to say that, of course we don't, Christopher. We've got a, a lovely little synthesizer, there's all sorts of synthesizers and MIDI applications. This one I particularly like, just because I can play with it nice and easily, look. Yes, we could write some programs. Uh, this is really just waiting for talent to be added, which I, I'm afraid I don't have, but it's, it's nice to see that sort of stuff is there. But the package I may well use, I'm, I'm really impressed with, is Hydrogen. I hadn't come across this before, and this is a, a drum machine, a drum sequencer, so uh, you've got all sorts of drums here, like a... Uh, you can just click on them, and you can sequence them by putting in the dots here, as you can see. So if I play this... That started to build something up, but now we, maybe we could add a... Maybe add one of those on the, uh, on the start, and maybe a... Maybe a crash as well, make it wild. Maybe a couple of uh, hand claps over there, and... Uh, oh, I quite like the cowbell, let's put that in there too. What would that sound like now? Oh yes, that's building up very nicely. As you can see, there's all sorts of tools you can play with to your heart's content in Ubuntu Studio. Now, in addition to having lots of audio and music tools, if we look in the menu here on Ubuntu Studio, you'll find there's lots of stuff for graphic design. Lots of uh, graphics utilities for doing professional graphics work. There's uh, various uh, photography tools as well for working with images from digital cameras. We've got Blender, which we'll look at in the next section. We've even got an ebook viewer, uh, various font tools, and then below that, lots of big, powerful applications. For example, we've got GIMP, which I've got running here, a nicer uh, multi-tabbed uh, editor, sort of, sort of a Photoshop clone. There's a YouTube space there, nice to see that on the screen. And uh, we've got our, our multi-layer editor here, so we can turn off different groups of elements. We can uh, go and scribble some uh, with some stars behind that. There we are, that's exciting, isn't it? So GIMP works very nicely on the Ubuntu Studio. Nice to have that here. But we've also got a structured graphics packages. We've got Inkscape, for example. Again, I've got Inkscape running. People often say, but what do I draw things like circuit diagrams in? And the answer to that can be Inkscape, which has basically everything here is a structured element. We could uh, copy and uh, uh, paste that. We've got another LED over there, look, which we could stick down here. Doesn't make any sense on the circuit board, but you get the, the principle. And if you want to know more about Inkscape, I've got a video all about Inkscape, which I'm sure you'll find a link to here on the screen. In addition to that, we've got various painting packages. We've got Critter, for example. I really like Critter. Again, I've got a video on Critter you can find on YouTube under, under Critter, I'm sure. But that's uh, loading up. And uh, there we are. We'll close that off. I'm just going to switch to using a graphics tablet because this is a very nice uh, natural uh, media type thing. It's like sort of reproducing using tools on real paper. So uh, if we go into that, I can basically scribble like I've got a real pencil. And if I just pick up a palette, maybe pick up a, a tool there and scribble with that. It doesn't seem that responsive to this, don't quite know why, but uh, I really, really like Critter, so you can do lots of cool things with that. You can even do animation um, with Critter if, if you want to. Let's uh, close that down for now, though, and come out of that, because there's another um, painting tool here as well, which is My Paint, which I hadn't used previously. My Paint, I really like. Again, natural media type of application. We've got lots of different... Uh, just move that down there. And we can see lots of different brushes which we can work in, which are all oh, really nice, really, really cool thing to work with. It really is like working with, with natural media, natural materials. It's very great to do this in a digital world. And there's a, there's a lovely tool here to do some mirroring, which will uh, well, we'll move that back over there. And we'll now go back to our brush and we can now continue to paint on both sides of the screen together with a nicer, in all, oh, you could have endless fun playing with this, couldn't you? Which uh, I probably shouldn't do right now, but that really is, that's rather fun, isn't it? And the uh, final thing I'll show you which here in terms of the really big packages, we've also got Scribus. Scribus is a open source desktop publishing piece of software, so you can also do your desktop publishing here in Ubuntu Studio.
Apparently, some people now use their computers for creating 3D models or editing video. And if you're one of those people or want to be one of those people, there's quite a few tools for you in Ubuntu Studio. Not least, as you can see here, we've got a, the Blender 3D modeling package in which you can build uh, traction engines like this or indeed anything else you can imagine. And Blender, in addition to being a 3D modeler, has also got inside it a video editing package. Not the best video editor in the world, but it's certainly there if you want to use it. But uh, if we just close that down, you'll see there's other video editing tools available here. If we look, for example, in video production, you'll see that we've got uh, a range of different editors. We've got, for example, PTV. I've not uh, used this before, but PTV is a perfectly decent little video editor. We just uh, maybe import some footage. I don't know, what should we have? Uh, oh, let's have a daffodil. That always would be nice to cheer us up. We could drag that down there. Yes, this is a traditional video editor. In addition to that, we have got, uh, do we want that? No, we don't, Chris, go away. We've also got uh, OpenShot, nice straightforward editor. If you want to do some very basic video editing, OpenShot is great, easy to get used to. OpenShot is sitting there. And uh, in addition to that, I think the best editor here is Caden Live. So we just run up Caden Live, maybe bring in a test file. Uh, there we are, Caden Live has got a file there. This is a, a nice package, takes a little bit more getting used to, but more powerful than the others I've shown you here. And we can uh, use it to edit things of nanobots or whatever it happens to be. So if you want to do video editing or you want to even do 3D models, there's various options available for you in Ubuntu Studio. Right, just before I finish off, I thought it was worth pointing out that in addition to the video software and audio software and publishing and graphics software you get in Ubuntu Studio, you've got a lot of other applications installed as well. The menu here really is full of lots of really useful things. Uh, so you've got, for example, uh, LibreOffice here, which uh, you get in most uh, Linux distributions. So we can go into, say, LibreOffice Writer, and uh, you can do all your lovely word processing in there, which of course can be creative stuff. And it's worth pointing out you've got loads and loads of fonts pre-installed, which is a uh, Really nice, you can use all sorts of fonts. Again, you could go and find these in any Linux distribution, any Linux install, but the fact they're all here straight away just makes your life a bit easier. There's all sorts of really, really wacky fonts waiting to be used uh, over here. And uh, it's also worth pointing out you have got the various internet tools you would expect. So you've got uh, the Thunderbird email client, you've got the Firefox web browser, which works perfectly well, as you can see. So really, if you do choose to install Ubuntu Studio, you've got all the different programs you want to do for creative work, but all the basic Office and web applications you'd use as well on a computer. Ubuntu Studio is a really nice idea and it's well executed. Absolutely, you could do the same thing yourself. You could actually just take a Linux distribution of choice, could be Ubuntu, could be Linux Mint, whatever, and install the creative applications you wanted. But it's actually really nice that someone's thought through what you need, found the applications, put it all together in one install, and you can therefore just install Ubuntu Studio and get down to work. But now that is it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.